Hi, I'm George and welcome to OpenCV Basics. In this video, we're going to look at how to access the individual pixels inside an image that you load. Now to do that, you're going to need to use a function called at. And sometimes if you're a novice C++ programmer, you're not familiar with the, the format of the at function and specifically the fact that it's a template. So to start off, let's go ahead and open an image up. You need to make sure that you have an image already inside of your default directory. You know that if you go right click on your project, properties, and whoops, right click, go to open folder in File Explorer. Here I have me.jpg just like in all these other videos I've been showing. So what we're going to do is load that in. So mat, we're going to call this original is equal to, uh, let's see, im read. And in im read, we're going to specify the file name, me.jpg, and of course, how we're going to load that in. To start with, we're going to use the simpler uh, method for well, that is, we're going to use the simpler case, and that is if our image is actually grayscale. So we're going to do a uh, image underscore load and then grayscale. Um, color is a little bit more complicated, not much more complicated, but let's just get familiar with at using a grayscale image to start with. So with this image loaded, we're going to want to iterate over every single pixel. And actually, I'm going to want to show the difference between using the at operator and, and modifying the pixels versus this original image. So let's actually do this a second time. Let's do mat um, modified is equal to I am read. And we're just going to load that image again. Yes, we could copy this over, but nothing like getting some practice loading images in if you, if you don't know what you're doing. Here we are. So the next thing we're going to do is iterate over every pixel in the image. Now the method we're going to use is not the fastest method. If you go on OpenCV's website, you'll find out that there are other methods that use pointers to iterate over every single pixel. However, the great thing about the at method is it's intuitive for most people. Most people understand that the images are made up of rows and columns of pixels, so iterating over those rows and columns just makes sense. Sometimes people have a problem going to the pointer world and quite understanding that same association. So let's just use the at function. So first of all, let's take our original image, so your mat object dot at. And this is where things get a little bit different. So inside of here, we are going to specify our row and column that we're accessing. I'm just going to leave that as an R and a C for right now. We'll add those variables in a moment. But inside of these brackets, what do you do? Well, this is a template function. Uh, basically, it means you need to provide the type, the object type you want to iterate over. And the object type is incredibly important because it, it uh, determines the size inside the computer to iterate over. What do I mean by that is images are made up of data, okay? And that data can have different sizes. It can be a floating point um, integer in which case, or excuse me, a floating point number, in which case it's size 32. It could be a double, which is 64, or it could be a value between zero and 255, which is typically stored in an unsigned integer um, of size eight, eight bits that is, or one byte. So because all of your information can have different sizes, we need a function that can be equally as responsive or generic, the ability for it to be able to iterate over any kind of size. And that's why we have to tell the computer, this image is this size. So in our case, we've decided to convert this to a grayscale image. So I know I'm going to be dealing with unsigned integers of size eight. So I'm going to use that here. Now you could just type in a char, which is, by definition, a, uh, a size eight integer. The problem with that though is um, it doesn't always stay that way. I like to be a little bit more specific. I like to use a variable that I know is the right size and one that when other people are looking at it, they're gonna immediately understand I'm using this because it's a certain size. So the easiest way to do that is to include, pound include, include, and then what I want is std int. We're going to open this up in here to take a look at what STD actually does. And it just defines for us some easy to use um, uh, aliases, basically. So instead of typing things like a long, long, you just type, I want an integer of size 64 that can hold that much information. Or I want an unsigned one. Instead of typing unsigned character, unsigned short, unsigned int, I just type uint 81632. Far easier to understand, really gets the point across of what the size is. Uh, are and what you want to deal with uh, inside of your program. So let's go back over here and go ahead and use that. So I'm going to want to use the unsigned int 8 underscore t. Uh, why? Well, it has 8 bits, and if you do the math, 8 bits can hold between 0 and 255, or 256 different values. And that's typically what is used to store images, just something you kind of have to know. So let's do a uint 
8 underscore t. Now it doesn't pop up in this particular case and that's not a problem. It's going to automatically know it's the right thing because I've already included that std int right up there. All right. So the next part though is we need to iterate over. We need to specify what row and column we want to access. For our presentation today, we're going to do a double for loop just to make our lives you know, easy. And we're also going to modify that image to show that yes, whoops, caps lock, we are iterating over it. So we're going to copy this line, but I don't actually want to do this to the original image. That's the one we're going to save. I'm going to do it to the modified image instead. So let's do our double for loop. Int row is equal to zero. Uh, R is less than the, uh, let's see, modified, modified, modified dot rows r plus plus i love using row and column uh, because i think it's more intuitive than uh, uh, i and j in this particular case and it lets me write the following which i always get a kick out of writing in this language modified dot calls and then c plus plus there you go amazing you finally get to write c plus plus someplace in c plus plus so okay so this is going to iterate over every single row and then within each row that we're dealing with we're then going to iterate over every column inside of that and this should hit every single pixel in that image but now we want to do something to it right so we can either we can get the value here as we're showing here we're requesting using the at function the value of the pixel at r and c but we can also store values back inside of there as well so let's just do modified dot add again uint 8 underscore t and then r and c and then let's do something to it let's multiply it by 0 0.5 basically dimish, diminishing the value or the intensity of this image now we're going to show these results out so we're going to use an im show just because we don't need to waste time doing all the wonderful stuff let's call this uh wow original and then let's do uh, original right there. And let's go ahead and copy and paste this because we're lazy. And let's do modified, modified, wonderful, modified, modified, copy, paste. And we need what? A wait key. Don't want to forget that. Otherwise, not a whole lot's going to happen. Okay, so just reviewing. We load in our images. We iterate over the one image. Make sure we uh, have the intensities. That is, if our value was, um, you know, what, like 8 instead, when you multiply by 0 0.5, it would be 4. It would be a lower intensity. It's going to be darker. So let's go ahead and hit local Windows debugger. Hit yes to build. And cross our fingers that I didn't do something wrong and we are good to go so here's the modified version and of course here is the original version it's half it has half the intensity values as before okay now that's grayscale imaging we want to mess now with color images so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back into our loading part and instead of uh, telling the program to change it to a grayscale value we're instead going to tell it to use color color and color great now a color image is fundamentally different than a grayscale image. A color image has three channels of informa uh, information. It has a red, a green, and a blue. Although in OpenCV land, it's actually uh, blue, green, red. It's the opposite of what we're typically used to in a lot of other applications. But that doesn't matter. Just, just make a mental note. What's important here to understand is that it's not an unsigned 8 underscore T we want to iterate over. If we're iterating over every pixel, remember every pixel is now composed of three components. So we need something a little bit different. And what we actually need is a vector type. That is something inside of OpenCV that already knows we need to iterate over three channels or three values to get from one pixel to the next. So to do that, we're going to change this template part of the function. What we're going to change that to in this case is of type vec. So if we do, uh, let's see, CV, colon colon vec you'll notice we've got all these different kind of vectors here vectors for two values that is two channels vectors for three vectors for four even even higher than that six and so forth it just depends on what you need and then after each one of these types we have things like b d f i you know integer float double byte uh, just different types of vectors for different sizes of values being held in those vectors because we're uh, because a uh, color image is still values between 0 and 255 typically, that is, we get a value of 0 to 255 in the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, we're going to use VEC3B, or byte. So now this is going to iterate over every single pixel, and it knows to skip uh, three bytes, basically, for each one, okay, instead of that single byte with the grayscale. We want to make sure we do the same thing over here. However, this just brings us to the beginning 
This is a reference to the start of the pixel, which is always going to be the blue value. If we want to then move to the green value and the red value, we need to use, we need to treat this kind of like an array. The way we're going to do that is, I'm going to put two brackets in here, I'm going to put a zero in. Zero is going to be the blue channel, right? That's the first one you come up with. So if I run this program now, what we're actually going to notice is that the blue channels are going to be halved. But that's not quite a stark enough contrast. So what I want to do instead is we're just going to multiply it by zero and get rid of the blue channel completely. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. All right, here we are. Here's the modified version. You can see it's very yellow. It only has the red and the green component. and It completely lacks any blue information. And that's what we've done. We've iterated over the blue pixels in this case and nuked them, got them completely out of this image. Let's go back again though, and let's do it to a different channel now. So blue was zero, green is the center one, right? So that would be a value of one. So if we get rid of all the greens this time, hit the run button again. Yes, that's fine. Please do build. Let's uh, see what we get. Ooh, we get this lovely magenta value instead. And then of course, as you probably expect, we can do this now for two, which is going to be the red channel. Let's go ahead and stop and hit run again. Yes, I would like to build it, please. Okay, and of course, now that we've gotten rid of the red, the greens and the blues uh, persevere, and that's why we get this very blue-greenish image. And that's, that's pretty much it for the at function. You just need to know what kind of variables you're dealing with, what the size is. Are you dealing with floats? Are you dealing with integers, unsigned integers? Are you dealing with color images, so you need vectors instead? Just keep that in mind. So uh, a lot of times you'll need floating point values instead. A lot of people like to work with floats instead of 0 to 255, so they make their images in floats. So make sure that this CV colon colon vec3b is a float type. So remember, there was a floating toy, uh, type vector3, and then if you were just dealing with an intensity image, you could just use a float by itself. Okay? Hopefully you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it. Thanks. Bye.